before the comedy jam, so I thought this would be a neat time, a good opportunity for you to meet some of the people behind the scenes and see how a concert is really put on. Won't that be fun? Come with me. Here's a guy, this is a guy that's working on behind the scenes of the concert, and they're always eager to tell you, excuse me, hi, how are you? Can you explain to the people what your job is, like what, what goes on behind the scenes? You explain to the pen? people, explain to the people yeah. what's going on. Tell them, tell them what you're doing. You, there's somebody up here. Excuse me, excuse me. Look at that, they're taping the... It's always important behind... Whoa, shit. okay. He's stepping on my fingers. That was his job. See, it's always important to have somebody doing that. Here's somebody... Ow! <laughs> Don't do that. You want an asshole. I'm a comedian. I'm a comedian. that I look like Howie Mandel. We're always getting confused. People are coming up to me all the time and going, hey man, do that rubber glove thing. I said, I'm not Howie Mandel. Now give me a tortilla. Give me something I can work with. Give me something that I'm ethnically compatible. But I do, huh? Don't I? I get perplexed if I see a tear. Well, me and Howie and Paul, we're just the comedians on this show, but Mike put this whole project together. Here's his office. Let's go pay him a visit. Oh, it used to say Mike. You know, producing a comedy jam concert like this takes a lot of energy and certainly a lot of hard work. Our producer, Mike Binder, has gone through painstaking care to make sure that everything is in its proper functioning order here for the concert. Here's his office. Let's, let's just take a peek. He's in there working pretty hard. Hey, hey, Mike. Get Mike, what are you Mike, get out of here, Dave. Mike, come on, Mike. Come on, come on. Come on. I'm a comedian. Originally, I thought to myself, I want to make the comedic version of an alley beating. Something that's quick, that's fast, and you never really know who hits you. And I said, you know, I'm going to call it the comedy jam because, uh, because it's funny and it's sticky and it's the type of thing that you can watch the special and an hour later someone can say, hey, you've got a comedy special on the side of your mouth. I'm a comedian.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the host of the Detroit Comedy Jam, Mike Finder! You know about the three dollar exit charge? You'll find out. Well, all right, we're filming a movie here tonight. We're filming a movie called the Detroit Comedy Jam. And we're gonna show it to people in Houston and they'll go, people in Detroit, they laugh? Now that's sort of queer, isn't it? And we'll go, yes, sir, Mr. Houstoner. Up here in Detroit, we've got humor coming all over the place. Well, we've even got a comedy club. A comedy club? Shit. <laughs> you see that stick over there by the barn? That's the comedy club. Because when I beat you with it, I'm going to laugh my ass off. <laughs> I'd like to start off and say if I'm a little dirty or off color, I'd like to apologize because my parents are here and I'm just doing it to piss them off. <laughs> Mama! Papa! Uh. <laughs> Law school? I kind of doubt it. My parents, my parents sent my brother to law school. When he got out, he sued him for wasting seven years of his life. So. <laughs> we went back. We had a big family dinner tonight, right? And my family dinners are so embarrassing because my Uncle Harry has a steel plate in his skull. Every time he goes through the kitchen, the magnets fly off the refrigerator and stick to the side of his head. So tonight, no one said anything, and he went home with my brother's report card on his ear. <laughs> well, the boy's been studying. But my parents are here. My parents are all right. My mom... My mom's all right. My dad's a dick, but... One time, my dad drove me and a date to the high school prom, and on the way home, he dropped me off first. <laughs> you run inside, Mike. I'll drive her home. But you gotta like your family, don't you think? Through it all, you just gotta like your family, you know? Aren't you always leery about people that hate their family? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're out on a date. You're out on a date with a girl. I haven't said a word to my dad or my brothers in eight years. Well, you'll have no problem dumping my ass then, will you? <laughs> There'll be no ties that bind here. First big riff and I'll just hop off the planet. How's that sound? <laughs> Glad you folks came tonight. You got a great show for you. <laughs> what about from the Middle East? We have anyone from the Middle East here tonight? <laughs> Connecticut? <laughs> Anyone from the Middle East? We have a lot of people in this area from the Middle East, right? We're glad they're here. But let's be honest. We want our liquor stores back. Okay? You can have the 7-Elevens. You can keep the Shell stations. But give us our liquor stores, because you don't know how to run them. I'd like some Budweiser, please. Pick six. <laughs> no, Budweiser. I'd like a six pack of Budweiser, please. Pick six. No, no, we say six, then we put a hyphen there, and then we go pack. I'd like a six pack of Budweiser, please. Pick six. No, six pack. Budweiser. The Shaw of Beers? <laughs> the Ayatollah of Alcohol? <laughs> With man, any of this at all? <laughs> Get a little hostility out here! Yes, we've all had problems abroad. 
I love that guy. That's my favorite guy on the on the on the cable. That the Reverend Dicky Donk. <laughs> it's the Reverend Dicky Donk in the Church of Me. Yes, it is. <laughs> Friends, if you've just tuned in, it's seven 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 thousand. And there's love here. Love and friends in the form of 24 operators <laughs> that need to know your Bank America number. <laughs> yes, they do. And the guy always ends, it's like guilt o rama. <laughs> you know, it's like, if you've given, if you've given, the Lord loves you. Yes, he does. But if you couldn't give, if you couldn't find it in your heart tonight to dig deep and stretch big, <laughs> then the Lord shall find ways to handicap your children. <laughs> give so little Ricky is no web-toed duck boy. And why shouldn't you give? Doesn't the Lord deserve what you have? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> Praise you, brother. Doesn't the Lord deserve a circular driveway? Yes, it does. You're in a coma now, aren't you? Doesn't the Lord deserve a circular driveway? Yes, he does. And doesn't the Lord deserve a Porsche? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And he's asked me to drive it. And I am praising the Lord. Hold up. Yes, sir. Ma'am, you are leaving, ma'am. Ma'am, where are you going now? Are you going to the bathroom? Is that what it is? You didn't like the religious stuff. I'll show you, ma'am. I'll show you folks how good the video equipment works in the bathroom here. Watch this. <laughs> yes, no one's safe, folks. We've got cameras everywhere tonight. Yes, we do. <laughs> Folks, if you gotta go, I'd use the alleys. Oh, brush up. You look fine, honey. Come on home. Come on back to daddy. Yeah. Oh, good. Get your pits with your hairspray. That's important. All right. <laughs> oh, great. Just in case you got... All right, you guys were laughing too hard. Damn. Damn, hey, what's that thing? You guys were laughing a little too hard. <laughs> no one's safe tonight, folks. No one is safe. You know, being in show business is kind of like being in politics. You got to do a lot of bullshitting in order to exploit people and make money. And I'm not here because I'm funny. I'm here because under the CETA program for Hispanic talent. Hope you guys are enjoying this. We got your money. <laughs> and now, through the miracle of audio comedy tronics, <laughs> Walt Disney invites you to meet the electronic comedian. <laughs> Where are you from? Good. Where are you from? Good. While you're in the park, make sure you visit Walt Disney's new ride in Fantasyland. It's the two blondes on a waterbed ride. <laughs> it's a lot of e-tickets. 
but Walt gets good women. <laughs> Make sure you watch people from other countries at Disneyland. <laughs> A lot of times, they don't have a real idea what the park's about. <laughs> I was waiting in line at Space Mountain behind an Oriental couple. I don't think they had a real grasp of the ride. They were carrying luggage. <laughs> You know, if we're such miracles of technology, why do we all move like we have boards up our ass? <laughs> Walt Disney, what a dick. You know, they say God created man in his own image. They say Walt Disney created the automatron in his own image. Let's be honest. Walt Disney must have made this movement a lock. <laughs> about three years ago. They call him the spark plug of the Motor City out there. He's driving that town crazy. He's gonna be a superstar. He's got his own new TV series coming out, a comedy show called Out of Control. You're gonna see him at Night Live. St. Clair Shores, Michigan. Let Dave Coulier be a welcome. Try something. We get some real dramatic lighting for this. That's great. Do this. Do that for me.
I'm getting into reggae music now. I, uh, reggae music, the nice thing about it is no matter how disastrous the lyrics are in these songs, everything seems to work out just great because it's so happy. You know, it's just... <laughs> Yeah, man, yeah. Yeah, man, yeah. Oh, la, 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 la. I got 11 kids around somewhere, oh, yeah. I'm not wearing any underwear, but I got reggae, mother, do, 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 do. reggae, mother, do, do. I love the beach and I love the sand, oh, yeah. I'm turning into a pelican. I got that reggae, mother, do, 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 do. Get it, mother, do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, my little hut. It just all burned down. You know I don't carry a frown because I got reggae. I say, buddy, put some shoes on your feet and get a job. You know, it's, uh, hey, come on. <laughs> so I'm back here. I'm staying with my parents while I'm in town, which is always just a dream come true. Uh, yeah. I, well, you know, you move out, you get your own apartment for about five or six years, then you move in with your folks for about a week, and you realize what it was that made you move out in the first place. You know, it's start going, oh, man, you know. So I'm back here, and I start having, I love my, my family and my parents, and, but I have these flashbacks, these terrorized things that I used to hate to do as a kid. My mom used to drag me along shopping. Moms are so into it, and as a kid, you hated it. Moms are like, let's go shopping. <laughs> and you're bummed out as a little kid, because you know it's going to be a good 10 to 20 hours out of your life, you know? <laughs> you don't want to shop, because at that point, when you're a little kid, see, mischief is your best friend. It follows you. You don't have to do anything. It's there around every corner. You're there moping around the store. It's like, this is so dumb. I hate this. All of a sudden, mischief is there. It's like, Psst, hey. Want to get in trouble? <laughs> Come on. So you're like, okay. I used to hide underneath those clothes racks in there waiting, oh, waiting for those ladies to get to me and then, ah! <laughs> I'm on sale, I'm a living bra. <laughs> And your mom sees you goofing off in public. She lets you know. She gives you that mean mom face. You know the one that's patented with mothers? She looks over at you and it's like... Stop it. <laughs> Second time she turns around, she really means business. It's like... I sit. <laughs> Stop. And watch it when they throw that neck over, because a poison dart could fly out of there. Your dad's belt, you don't know what the heck's going to shoot out of there, you know? Then the third time, they don't say anything. They don't say anything, but they get real low. They get in the starting gate position to come running at you, you know? And they stay low. They dodge your mom radar, is what they do. And you hear that music as they're approaching. Dun -dun 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 you actually hear that. And they get real low, and they run up to you and stop in front of your face. It's like... You better just stop right now. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Do you hear me? You see all these people right here? I'll pull your pants down in front of you. Every one of these people, blister, your little butt, you know? And your hair is just going Brrrr. All right, Mom, I'll stop. Give me a spit mask or something, Mom. Quit it. I'm not leaving dad out of this, of course. <laughs> fathers love to pull practical jokes on their kids. This is the reason why fathers enjoy having children. <laughs> fathers, you can see this. Fathers call their kids over all the time. Like, hey, come here. I got to tell you something. Come here. Come here. Pull my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Boy, they're happy when you pull that thing, aren't they? They do that dance. <laughs> Got you a fourth time today, didn't I? <laughs> You're just going, Dad, that's sick. Quit it, Dad. Grossing me out, I'm your son. Quit it. Because fathers can be very embarrassing. Have you ever gone someplace with your dad and everyone in your family is real embarrassed about the pants he has on? Oh, man. <laughs> you know the ones I'm talking about? They're purple and green checked pants and there's orange rockets shooting through there and there's a landscape built on back here. And you can see him right through a fog when he's got these babies on. Gee, that's dad down the road. Where do fathers shop for these pants? They must go to retired clown shops or something because you're walking around with them, kids are hitting on them for balloons and gum. Mr. Clown, Mr. Clown. My dad's going, boy, the kids really dig me, huh, Dave? <laughs> I'm sitting here going, yeah, Dad, have them pull your finger. Go on. Show them. Go on, Dad. Guys are proud of their gas, I tell you. Guy, hey, listen to this. Oh, you never expect a girl to blast one, though, I tell you. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden, Mary! <laughs> oh, God. Have her skirt fly up. Whoa, dude. <laughs> yeah, girls don't fart, they squeak. Uh, they have those petite little behinds, I tell you, you know, it's like. <laughs> oh, God. And they smell the worst, the worst. You do, you catch a girl, you go, that was definitely you. <laughs> They'll deny it to the end of the world. It was a catalytic converter. <laughs> We're not even in the car. <laughs> well, then a car drove by. I think you crapped your pants, sweetheart. <laughs> That's what I think. Ever get those kind of, as you're walking, it's like <laughs> You think for just a second, hey, maybe I can outrun this one. <laughs> By that time, it's 30 feet long. People are walking through it going, what the hell came through here? Dames, this is a beautiful theater. I've been looking all over the place. This is great. I'm just gonna get it. Drink. That. Okay, now I'm gonna first look at this. Notice the taking of pictures or the operating of any recording devices in this theater is strictly prohibited. There's a mistake here. I know this, you should turn this off. This is illegal. What you're doing is illegal. And you're watching. You people are watching your accessories to the crime. So you can be arrested, too. This is, turn this off. You shouldn't, it's a mistake. They're recording this entire, you make, you know, this is a mis, don't look. Maybe if they, you just don't look, it'll be, don't stop. Turn it off! Turn it off! The next guy coming on stage is one of my best friends in the whole world. A very special man from Mazalan, Mexico. Via East Los Angeles, the star of the TV series AKA Pablo, starring a new movie with Terry Gar coming out from Miracles. It's a pleasure to welcome to Detroit, Michigan, Paul Rodriguez! <laughs> Gotta admit, though, I was nervous coming to Detroit. So every Mexican that comes to this town, Tommy Hearns kicks his ass. <laughs> Otherwise, you're a terrific town because you have a shortage of Iranians here. There aren't any Iranians here, are there? No? Good. Let's talk about these bastards. They piss me off because they resemble Mexicans. 
They do. You put some laundry on a Mexican's head, hey, his name is Mohammed. <laughs> they are. They look like us, don't they? They're short, we're short, they're brown, we're brown, they got money, we're brown. <laughs> I'm especially upset because my sister Maria, well, all my sisters are named Maria. <laughs> my sister Maria, number five, she's dating this Iranian guy, and I bet you one day they're going to have children. I can see it now. Little Ramon Manuel Rodriguez Mohammed running around the house. Son of a bitch will grow up to own and vandalize his own gas station. <laughs> With my time off, I've been doing silly things, Caucasian things. I'm bowling now. <laughs> Hispanics, we don't bowl because it's not a macho sport, right? It's not a very masculine sport. You can be a very masculine person. You go up to the bowling lane. Something happens the minute you stick your fingers into that ball, though. Weird transformation, a metamorphosis, if you will. <laughs> it's kind of like, stick your fingers in there, and you begin to swish. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, it's a stupid sport, but I'm going to continue to do it, because where else in the city can you get a pair of shoes for 50 cents? Of course, after this, I'm going to go dancing. Dancing is a necessary ritual. Actually, if there were no dancing, it'd be tough to meet women, right? It would be. I go dancing a lot, but I think that most guys have the same attitude. Now, women never go to these places by themselves, right? Women always do everything in twos or in threes. Come on, Martha, this way. Walk over here. No, no, no. This, no, no, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come to, come to the bathroom with me. Come on, come on. Man, I don't have to go. Well, just come and watch. Come on. Same thing, you're out on a nightclub, you can walk up to the most feminine, beautiful girl in the room, you ask her to dance, the minute she gets on the dance floor, she begins to move in places you can't. <laughs> and all guys of all nationalities, we're basically up there just killing time, right? It's a long song. <laughs> You better save some of that energy <laughs> for casa. But this is the 80s, and I'm so proud and so glad to know that there is a woman running for the vice presidency. <laughs> Long overdue, because frankly, I think every man in this audience knows that the reason why women have been mistreated all down through history is because men are jealous and envious, because they are the superior sex. Women are far more intelligent than men. They outlive us. And they have more than five senses. Women are psychic. They are, because they know if you're going to get laid or not. <laughs> Guys, we have no idea. Maybe yes, maybe no. Now, personally, I've never gone to bed with an ugly woman. I woke up with a whole bunch of them, though. <laughs> hey, I don't know what happens. They switch them on me at night. I go to bed with Bo Derek. I wake up with Bo Diddley. <laughs> kind of woman you want to go, please go home. Go to Kmart. I love Detroit. All Mexicans should visit Detroit once in their life. After all, it is our Hispanic holy land. It's the birthplace of the Chevy. Because say what you will, we Hispanics, we're loyal consumers, man. You never see us in no Toyota, right? We always drive American cars. Because you can't do anything in these Japanese cars. Have you ever tried to make love inside a Toyota? You managed to get your girlfriend in the car? She's in the car going, yes, Paul, yes. Ooh, ooh. And you're outside banging on the window, honey. <laughs> Baby. That's not me. You're in fourth gear. When I was going to school, they had something called mandatory busing. 
force mandatory integration. They want us all to mix together, right? They want blacks and whites and orientals and Mexicans to all mix up. They're not going to be happy until we all look like Filipinos. <laughs> and busing wasn't popular with Mexicans because we ain't stupid. We know the minute you get our ass on a bus, you ain't taking us to school. <laughs> we'll wind up in Guadalajara going, hey, deja vu. Shit, this looks familiar. <laughs> My school did need mandatory busing. It was a beautiful symbiotic relationship. We had all kinds of ethnic groups there. We had blacks, we had Japanese, we had Chicanos, we had Caucasians. It was nice, man. Went to class, the teacher told us, you're in America, you're all here, you're all equal, and you go to shower. <laughs> and the most embarrassing thing of life is being butt naked next to a black dude. Because <laughs> they'd be staring at you, man. They'd be out there going, Shit, come here, man. Look at this here. <laughs> Say, man, what's the rest of your dick? <laughs> I had an answer for them, too. I said, I don't know. Maybe you got it. <laughs> so they be out there, boy. Black dudes be using soap by the pound. They be out there talking about, yeah. <laughs> you know, man. <laughs> Say, Willie, you want to wash that in over there for me? Because if you believe that we were all made by one creator, then he must have created our penis also. It's like he probably, God probably asked black men, what do you guys want, jobs or cocks? <laughs> I'm glad he didn't ask me. So I'd have been walking down the street, talking about, God damn, wait a minute, the light is changing, oh shit. People be asking me, where are you going, Rodriguez? Not to work. <laughs> he probably asked Japanese guys the same thing, too. That's why there's no unemployment in that country. Because <laughs> when it comes to Japanese, man, hey, we're talking Izuzu. Out of all the latest arrivals, the boat people, did you guys get your share here? Shit, it's Ronald Reagan. It was his fault, man, because, see, they were rowing towards our country. Then they heard he was giving away free cheese. Son of a bitch. Let's get there before the Velveeta goes. They taught me an important lesson. They taught me Anglo paranoia. Which happens all the time, right? If you're Hispanic and uh, you're around another Hispanic, it's, you know, we don't mean it in an offensive way. We just start talking, you know, hey, como estas, que estas haciendo? Pues nada, pues aquí nomás. And you can be like a, a nice church-going individual, you know, God-fearing, you know, be nice to your neighbor. But when you hear another language you don't understand, in the back of your Caucasian brain, you're always thinking, there they go again, <laughs> talking that shit around us. But the other day, the tennis shoe was on my foot. Because I'm in this elevator in downtown Los Angeles, right? I'm just standing there, minding my business, pressing, fucking around with the buttons. <laughs> the door opens, four boat people walk in there, right? You know, you know how it is, you're in a secluded little space, you're there guarding your own little... Hi guys, how are you? <sighs> how you doing? They have no regards to my presence, right? They start talking their language. I'm handling it. I'm going, all right, it's all right. I'm getting off on the 15th floor. Get up to the seventh floor. I can't handle it anymore. And you weren't there, so I had to straighten out their ass on your behalf. I told them too, I said, now, you listen to me? I'm only going to tell you this one time, I don't know what happened, maybe you were blown off course, maybe you're not aware where you're at. <laughs> but let me remind you, you're in America now! <laughs> Speak Spanish. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have to go to the bathroom before I go on. I have to go to the bathroom before I go on. Not in your seat.
Outside. So, anyways, I was. Listen, all right. Listen, come on. What? What are you laughing at? No, come on. Don't laugh, cause it, it'll throw me off. Anyways, last time I was in Detroit, they put me in a hotel, and I never saw this before. But there was a TV in the bathroom. Okay. All right. All right. And this. Listen. What? And this really fucked me up, right? Cause I was in the bathroom watching TV for like half an hour, right? And then a commercial came on, so I went in the other room and pissed on the bed. <laughs> but, no, come on. Come on. Hey, come on. No, come on, don't laugh. I have to sleep in that. This is great. I'm here at the Fisher Theater, and, uh, and it's great. Look, people in the balcony, the balcony. Great. All right, OK. Come on. Come. Okay, come on. No, you know what we'll do? This will be fun, okay? You guys in the balcony, on the, on the count of three, on the count of three, spit on these people. <laughs> That'll be fun. That's <laughs> so weird. Woo! I was, I was, oh, cut that out. What's your name? Mike. Mike, and what do you do, Mike? Draw. You draw. <laughs> are you the quickest one in town? I bet you are, Mike. <laughs> and what do you draw, Mike? What do you draw? <laughs> Why did you scream, ma'am? Get your finger out of her ass. <laughs> you, draw, you draw a fisher body. What is that? I, Fisher body, is that like just their daughters or uh, the whole family? <laughs> what is Fisher body? I don't know what that means. Cars. cars, you draw cars as they're going by. <laughs> Mike, get this one. <laughs> Probably wondering how you can hear me, right? Because I'm not standing near this. I got one of those newfangled rectal mics. <laughs> <laughs> Testing, one, two, three. 
Is it up high enough? <laughs> I want to walk over to the speakers because feedbacks feel so great. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? Stell. Stell? <laughs> is that like, who named you that? Is, it, <laughs> is that just like at birth, your mother went, here it comes? Stell! <laughs> and what do you do? Stell! What's your last name? Don't have one. You don't need one. <laughs> Not, you don't have to go, Stel! and then you have to go, Stel who? <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, how do you know when you're finished? <laughs> Everybody, everybody, sh everybody. Oh, this is what we need. All right, okay. <laughs> everybody, sh okay. no, come on. Everybody. What? what? <laughs> That's my line. Everybody, c come here for a minute. <laughs> What's your name? Uh... How did you know I was pointing to you? <laughs> I know you. You spell it backwards, don't you? <laughs> and what do you do, Bob? So, is there an office party here tonight? <laughs> okay, everybody, pull over, come on. <laughs> come on, everybody. Bob, come on. <laughs> Draw something, come on. <laughs> Faster. Come on. Come on. Fuck you. Come on, do something. What did you ask me? And drugs you are. I'll have you know, lady, that I do not take drugs and I don't drink. I, I figure if I no, listen to this. This is what I was thinking. So if I took drugs or I drank, I, I would be so weird. <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? I've asked you three fucking times! <laughs> you! The guy behind you! You! <laughs> What's your name? Jerry. And what do you do, Jerry? You work for... Michigan Bell. <laughs> They love you, Jerry. <laughs> Did you get the job because you wanted to be popular? <laughs> What do you do at Michigan Bell, Jer? A cable splicer. Nothing! You're a boss. <laughs> What do you mean you're a cable? They give you a piece of cable and they go, go to work, Jer. <laughs> All right, can I go home now? <laughs> He's a cable splicer and you hate him. I feel bad. <laughs> hey, dude, Jerry, I want to do something for you. You know what? I'm going to have him draw you. <laughs> Can you draw him? He's got kind of a Fisher body. <laughs> yeah. What's your name? Dennis. Dennis. The Menace. And what do you do, Dennis? A television interviewer. A television interviewer. <laughs> oh. Do you know him? Yeah. Oh, Dennis, uh, where do you do that? Late Night America. Late Night America. Yeah. All right. All right, I'm not stupid, Dennis. <laughs> We're in America, right? <laughs> It's late. <laughs> Can I write you a note or something? <laughs> People there are going, where the fuck's Dennis? Late Night America. That's on PBS. Poobus. Watch Dennis on Poobus. Tonight's guests are... Eh! 
Who's on the show tonight, Dennis? Uh, gangs and amnesia. Gangs and amnesia. <laughs> Is that one guest? <laughs> I forget who I killed. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do my impression of Brooke Seals when she was just a little baby. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. No. Okay. No. Wait. Uh, okay. The only thing that the only thing that comes the only thing that comes between me and my Calvins <laughs> is caca. <laughs> All right, all right. I want an audience participation, okay? You know what I don't understand? You know what I don't understand? What? It's Spanish. Anyways. <laughs> when you get home, hey, next time you're looking at your mom, <laughs> do this, all right? I should have got the lubricated one. <laughs> okay, how many fingers am I holding up? Thank you very much. Good night. Joe Lodin!